My name is Andy Lin, and this is my 1993 Mazda RX-7. Not one of those cars where you are really looking to make you know huge numbers in terms of horsepower. You know, if you have a decent amount of horsepower and you take it to the track, you can pretty much hang with the best of them. This particular car I've had since 2013, but this is my third RX-7. First one I had, I sold it after four years, after I decided to get into riding motorcycles, and I did that for about six years, and then I got the itch for RX-7s again. Uh, well, I wanted another car that I could, you know, modify and take to the track. I found myself comparing pretty much every car that I was interested in back to the RX-7. So, you know, in the end I decided why not just get another RX-7 and, and go from there. I originally thought I wanted to go and uh, build a Fujita Engineering RX-7. Uh, after that, drifting became really popular. And then at one point, I really wanted to build a drift car. Um, so I got a Vertex kit. And I had that on the car for about a year. But then I realized I'm not really much of a drifter and I really like to do you know, time attacks. And I wanted to really get into more track racing. So Ari Amamiya was one of those tuners that was very much focused on you know, time attack and racing. And so it was kind of that that inspiration that brought me um, to wanting to build an Ari Yamamiya RX-7. The reason I got the authentic parts was because I wanted to support Ari Yamamiya, right? Because of what they've done for the industry, what they've done for RX-7 owners around the world, uh, and the inspiration that they've brought me over the years. And so I thought if I was going to build an Ari Yamamiya car, I wanted to build something that I could be proud of, you know, something that I could one day, if I were to ever meet Isami Amemiya, that I would be able to show him my, a picture of my car and be proud of the fact that the parts on the car are from his shop. So when I got the parts, I was quite surprised and quite pleased to find that everything fit up almost perfectly right off the bat. I was able to just, you know, loosely mount everything to the car and I found that all the lines were fitting, there were no unnecessary gaps and it took minimal skill, I would say, to really get it looking pretty decent. Um, and I was quite happy with the results that I got, despite you know my lack of experience and my lack of knowledge when it came to body work. The one thing that RE does not do that a lot of other tuners do is they don't sell one kit. Um, that you can go and buy and get everything for, right? So everything that you want from Ari Yamamiya typically is, you know, piecemeal. You can buy different parts and you put to, put together your own build. And honestly, I think that's what makes it unique because everyone who buys these Ari, Ari Yamamiya parts, they don't necessarily have to buy one style. They can buy one piece here, one piece there, and then build their own unique look. My inspiration comes from their original Time Attack car uh, that had the uh, N1 bumper, ADGT uh, wide body fender kit, which includes the front fenders, the side skirts, and the rear fenders. And the carbon fiber hood is a, is a mainstay in a lot of Ari Yamamiya cars, as well as the carbon rear diffuser. Under the hood is one of the few areas I didn't um, modify as much because the base car that I originally purchased came uh, pretty well built. It had a street ported motor, it had a GT35R, as well as a Gretti front mount intercooler. And so I didn't really feel the need to really um, you know, put too much money into the engine. When I first bought it, it made 350 uh, horsepower to the rear wheels, and I thought that was pretty sufficient. So a primary focus for you know, building a reliable rotary engine is to add all the necessary cooling modifications. Ironically, when I first finished building the car, I didn't think the build quality was, was really at a level where I could even get into a car show, even if I wanted to. And so originally, I never really bothered because I didn't think I could get my car into it. Um, the funny thing is, the first car show I ever went to, I drove this car there, but I parked it outside in the parking lot with everyone else. And as I was walking in, people were talking to me say, why, why are you parking your car out here? Why didn't you bring it in? And I just thought, well, because it's not really nothing that special, right? I mean, it wasn't, it didn't have, you know, really good paint job or anything. That was always, I guess, my perception of my, my car. 
don't go out there trying to you know impress people but do it because you love it you know and let that be what drives you and get to know the car you know work on the car yourself find out what changes each of the modifications makes to the car as you go that way you can appreciate every modification um, that you ultimately have on the car and even for myself you know even though it, it looks like you know some people may be done with it but personally it's always going to be something that I want to you know continue tweaking continue uh, revamping uh, and making it better in the end the, the whole point is to have fun to learn and to grow and to get to know the cars and get to know the people and to appreciate other people's builds because ultimately those people may come to inspire you one day. This is one of those cars where when you take it through a corner just right it feels like everything in the world is just right and everything is working as it's supposed to be. This is one of those cars where you know when you take a tight corner or uh, you know you go a little bit too fast or faster than you think you should go and it, it handles it you know it basically can take whatever you can dish out um, and that's really why I love it